Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome. I am John Kogan, the CEO of Performative, the online community for corporate finance, accounting, treasury, and related professionals. Uh, first, I would like to welcome everyone to the webinar entitled Leveraging Technology to Elevate the Strategic Role of Finance. As the role of finance continues to evolve, the office of the CFO now has much more ownership of technology adoption. In fact, as an aside, I wrote a very interesting article uh, last week about the disappearing role of the CIO. I think a lot of that is actually being consumed by the office of the CFO now. So the question is, how do today's senior finance professionals drive technology adoption to produce results in the face of expectations to always do more with less? Uh, finance leaders need to not only understand which systems his or her staff are considering, uh, but also what company employees across the enterprise need in order to maximize productivity, support growth, and drive profitability. This webinar will illustrate uh, how uh, moving the right operations into the cloud and other uh, technology platforms uh, can help finance leaders succeed in leading the adoption of technology uh, that will offer their companies the highest ROI. Uh, so the bottom line is finance organizations are being asked to do more and more with technology, being asked to actually own technology across broad swaths of uh, the enterprise. And this is a great challenge for folks who haven't been trained as technologists. Uh, but the good news is there's an amazing world of tech out there available for us uh, in all of the functional areas, finance, accounting, treasury, tax. Um, and we're going to hear a lot more about that from folks who really know what they're talking about today. Uh, speaking of that, I would like to thank uh, today's sponsors, Baker Tilly and Host Analytics, for helping us make this event possible. Not only are they uh, offering up uh, wonderful speakers to help educate all of us today, uh, but also they help us make this event and everything that we do on Performative, including the website itself, uh, free for all users. So we thank them very much. A uh, quick note on today's agenda, we will first hear brief presentations from three speakers, and then we will move to a panel discussion where we will spend the remainder of our hour. We would like this to be an interactive experience for you, so if you have any questions at any time, please go to the questions area in your GoToWebinar control panel and send us your questions. So take a look at that control panel. There should be a little area with questions. You might have to hit a plus button to expand it. Uh, but then go ahead and ask your questions. We will do our best to get them all in. If we miss on any of them, we will do our best to follow up with you after the event and, uh, and try and get your question answered. We will send out a link to a soft copy of this presentation to all attendees. Uh, so uh, look for that via your email. For those who have signed up for CPE credits, um, we will uh, typically within 48 hours get soft copies of your certificates out to you. Uh, if you have any questions about CPE credits, uh, later on in today's presentation I'll have a slide that will show you the email address for Tanya Walsh. She manages our CPE credit program and she'll be happy to take care of any questions you may have. Um, also, a note on CPE credits, we will be asking two uh, quick polling questions during today's webinar presentation. We have to do that uh, in order to be able to grant CPE credits. Um, so please bear with us while we do that. And if you're not interested in CPE, question, in CPE credit, we'd still love to know the answer to the polling questions. Um, these are our good uh, broad statistical uh, analysis sort of questions, and it would be great to get everyone's input. All right, on to a quick word and welcome to Performative. Uh, for those of you for whom this is your first event, just uh, 30 seconds on Performative. Uh, we're the largest and fastest growing online resource for finance, accounting, treasury, and related professionals. Uh, we're a community of over 400,000 of these folks. And I like to say we're the least fun place on the internet. People come here not to socialize or connect with one another. They simply come to ask questions and get answers from peers and subjects matter experts. Uh, all of it's completely free. There's no ads on the site. Uh, please check us out at performative.com. Um, it's a wonderful resource for uh, folks in these professions. Uh, today we've got a, a lot of things we want to get to. Bottom line is we'd love to be able to 
uh, give everyone on the line today a great education on uh, some of the tools that are at your disposal. Uh, and not only give you a, a view into some of the tools that are at your disposal to make you and your organizations more effective, uh, but also help elevate your role, the role of finance uh, within the corporation. Uh, and we're going to be hearing from some subject matter experts. We'll be hearing some uh, great real-world examples uh, of uh, how this is working for other folks. And to lead us off today, I'd love to introduce Dave Hunt. Dave is the corporate controller at Host Analytics, uh, someone who lives and breathes technology at a tech company. Uh, Dave is responsible for accounting and finance functions within the company. He has 20 plus years of FP&A and accounting experience with such companies as Oracle, JDSU, Sun Microsystems, Veritas, Mercury, HP, and PwC. Dave, that's an illustrious group of folks there. And uh, uh, please take it away from here. Thank you very much, John, for the uh, for the introduction. And I'm really pleased to be here today to uh, talk to you about um, leveraging technology to uh, elevate the strategic role of finance. So um, before I go into the specifics here, I um, just wanted to introduce everybody to Host Analytics. Um, so our product is an integrated corporate performance management suite for uh, CPM. That is the uh, most comprehensive based in the cloud today. And our product suite includes uh, budgeting, consolidations, uh, scorecard dashboards, um, and reporting capabilities. Um, and we, uh, we deliver our product suite over the cloud or via a SaaS or a software as a service delivery model. Um, we believe the SaaS model optimizes the use of technology and helps to elevate the role of finance based on, uh, number one, very low cost of ownership. Number two, uh, fast to implement and uh, getting information to users much faster than on-premise. And uh, the uh, solution is very flexible and allows reports and information to, to be uh, provided to stakeholders on um, how they need it and uh, when they need it. And you can see um, our list of, partial list of our customers um, there on the slide. So we have a wide variety of uh, customers across um, numerous um, industries. So let me talk about the uh, evolving role of finance here. So this is kind of my depiction of um, the evolving role of finance, kind of using the evolution of humankind as the analogy. And the far left, you can see a Lucy there. Um, and then on the far right, we've got modern uh, Homo sapien. And so Lucy uh, there on the left, um, kind of the equivalent of finance being just the bean counters or just the rack and stackers for the organization. And this is kind of like the 2000 era. Uh, the use of technology is minimal, and a lot of work is being done on spreadsheets with a lot of manual uh, manipulation. Um, there is minimal business partnering and um, analysis being done at this stage. Now, the, uh, on the far right side, the homo sapiens view, or the more evolved view, uh, is finance is a proactive business partner that facilitates not only getting data quickly to the right people at the right time, but also providing um, insightful analysis that helps to identify business drivers and how to help drive organizational objectives. Um, in this view, technology is used extensively to enable the finance function to evolve to this level, um, that is, as business partners and um, enablers of the business. And so uh, getting your technology right um, is a key enabler in the process of, of evolving finance, uh, evolving the finance function to a business partnering role. And this technology should be able to, number one, gather data quickly from all sources. And this means uh, general ledgers, um, operational data, consolidation, and both internal and external data. Uh, number two, should be flexible enough to change as the needs of the business change and provide the scenarios needed to drive business results. And number three, be able to produce integrated reporting and indicators of business performance, uh, such as scorecards, dashboards, KPIs, and others. Um, so really, everything should flow without manual or a lot of manual checking or extra review to ensure uh, the numbers tick and tie. OK, so what are we hearing? I'm going to go through this one uh, quickly here. So some of the things that we're hearing from uh, potential customers and from our own customer base and um, uh, in, within the organization. Number one, um, lack of integration across financial and operational platforms. Uh, data is hard to get to one place, and it, it, the ownership isn't there. Um, the strategic planning process is not driven into, the, into an operational plan and is uh, a separate and disconnected process. And in many cases, it's just kept on a spreadsheet on some uh, computer. Uh, number three, difficulty with scenario planning. So too much time is being spent with multiple multiple versions uh, sitting in different places, 
either geographically or functionally. Um, uh, the need to be able to provide um, ad hoc reporting, dashboards, uh, business data and drivers to the business users much faster. Uh, that This is not happening as, as much as it should be. So a lot of time is spent on uh, manual processes and not enough time on analysis or understanding the uh, drivers of the business. And finally, um, uh, major reporting deficiencies. So we, uh, we need information much faster and, and we need to have it available to the business owners when they need it. Um, and there's lots of basically lots of racking and stacking going on on spreadsheets um, and manual intervention or manual checking to make sure all the numbers tick and tie. Okay, so how can uh, technology help? Um, so on the, if you look on the left-hand side, I think what you're going to see is, um, you know, this is kind of a, a before and after. On the left is before and the, on the right is the after of how technology can be used. Um, the before on the left basically shows disconnected data and processes um, and the effort needed to ensure that it's compiled correctly. Um, it's large and the effort's very time consuming. Um, it's very slow to give data information to the users given the manual effort that's needed to compile the data and get the reporting out to the stakeholders. And then on the right hand side, uh, technology is being used, um, in this case a CPM suite, um, and other enablers such as data extraction uh, technology um, to really have one source of truth for all the data. Uh, the process of integrating the data is automated as well as the um, actual reporting of the financial and operational data to the, uh, to the stakeholders. So another way of looking at this, um, so you know, using technology to gather all the data from a variety of sources. So showing here, um, as an example, you know, multiple ERPs from different places, um, but this can also include other such just external data, um, operational data, competitive data, and really having it all in one place so you can have that data um, basically in one place to be able to report on it how you want it, when you want it. And in this example, um, you, know, you, you can see that you know, the result here is going to be better data transparency across the organization. And uh, we're going to be able to eliminate um, a lot of the uh, manual processes that drive non-value added activities. So a couple of examples, and I'm going to go through these uh, fairly quickly here. So here's an example um, to gather an, an ex, ex, um, external input. Um, it, it's being automatically fed into that CPM tool. So you can see, just say we're in the finance department of a company that purchases food as part of an overall process for the business. Um, and if we're doing budgeting or some other kind of planning, and we want to incorporate that into our planning environment, this is a fee that automatically comes into the CPM suite. So there's no manual intervention. The, you know, the, the, the tool or the uh, technology is set up to automatically go get that data and feed it into our uh, scenario planning or budgeting tool so we can have the data there when we need it. And you know, this is an example of a, of a technology called Decision Hub that, you know, again, automatically pulls um, into the reporting environment and, again, without manual intervention. Um, here's another great example of putting technology to work in the FP, FP&A environment. So at Host Analytics, we have an ERM or an executive report manager that allows us to produce uh, comprehensive reporting packs. Um, very quickly from a variety of sources, such as Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, um, web content, and others. So the time to get all the data uh, from a variety of sources is it's really greatly simplified. And the beauty of this technology is um, if changes need to be made, the changes can be made in the uh, source document, and then the technology will automatically pull in the new source document information when the report is rerun or the ERM report is rerun. So as an example, and internally we use this ourselves, um, and it, this has greatly reduced the, uh, the reporting part of our overall uh, process um, at Host Analytics. So no more, you know, recut and paste into PowerPoints or ensuring, you know, or checking data to make sure it's flowing and updating correctly and all the numbers tied between the reports. This technology does it um, automatically. So this is a great example of using technology to automate and greatly reduce cycle time in the close and disclose process. So just a couple of very brief examples of, you know, of the results that you get when you get the technology right. This first one is basically on the left-hand side. So this is before, you know, technology implementation, um, basically taking 10 days to close and disclose. And then after the technology implementation, using the CPM suite and the technology around data, automatic uh, data extraction uh, from ERPs and other sources, I mean, basically, uh, going from a 10-day to a 4-day close and disclose process. So it, it really makes a huge difference 
And this basically allows a, a lot more time to analyze uh, data and to be proactive with the business team. And then finally, uh, this, this, uh, uh, the source for this data is from the Aberdeen Group, and the biggest takeaways here are, uh, number one, the best-in-class best companies were able to increase their profitability by 21% uh, using technology, in this case, C, a CPM-based solution. And then uh, specifically, the same companies who use host analytics increase their profitability by 33%. So to sum up, um, you know, technology can make a huge difference in terms of elevating the strategic role of finance by allowing more time to be spent on analysis and getting the data right to the uh, stakeholders at the right time to drive the business results. Um, and with that, I will turn it back over to uh, John. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, David. I appreciate that. Um, and uh, we're going to continue running right along here since we have a lot of ground to cover. Uh, next up is Dave Locksmith. He's the Senior Manager of FP&A at Planar Systems. Uh, Dave is responsible for worldwide FP&A at Planar. Before his current role, he was a controller for two BUs at Planar. Dave also worked at Intel uh, as a senior financial analyst in manufacturing. Uh, and prior to working in finance, Dave was a captain in the U.S. Army. Uh, and Dave has an MBA from my favorite business school, the Fuqua School of Business at Duke University. Uh, Dave, welcome, and please take it away. Thank you very much. Uh, well, good morning, everybody. Um, who Planner is, uh, real briefly here, so we are a uh, display provider, mostly LCD and projection, and we try to focus on specialty display applications. Um, about, you can see about 500 employees, offices worldwide, and a pretty wide range of well-known customers, either that we directly sell to or they're one step away with an integrator in between. Um, makes the job interesting to where you can see where our, our products are being used and the interesting applications. Some of the uh, areas that our products are used, we, we've, you know, it's kind of a wide range of uh, display applications. Um, one of the areas that's a pretty hot growing area is that bottom picture there where you can see all those horses there and, you know, making these large video walls with very small bezels in between the different uh, um, LCDs to make, you know, pretty amazing images as well as having, you know, you know enables interactivity as well with the displays. So um, what we did as far as getting, uh, you know, adding a lot of technological benefit to our company is, um, you know, initially why we looked at it is we had very poor access to financial information. We had multiple ERPs from our different subsidiaries, different chart of accounts. It was really hard to know what was going on. Um, so we never could really provide the visibility to managers about what was really happening with the results, which, of course, made it harder to analyze and forecast and um, any other uses of the data. It was very hard to get new people ramped up and to really learn the tricks of the business and, you know, what data to use, what data you couldn't use. Um, you know, business managers could not get any sort of self-service on the reporting, so it ended up being finance's job to go and, you know, get run little reports for them and run, run, you know, print them out, run, give them to people, and it's just, you know, very, you know, as a low, as a, you know, bad way to use the finance resource that we had. Um, and we also needed to improve uh, accuracy and accountability. Um, when you don't have good data, no one really can be held responsible for the results, and so, um, and a lot of times if the data was wrong, that you know, obviously caused a lot of problems as well. Um, what we wanted from a solution, um, and we wanted to you know, greatly enhance our capability at the company, uh, we want something that's simple and straightforward, but also very powerful. And you know, there's a lot of um, options out there, but they're also pretty complicated. So we wanted something for a company our size, you know, we're around 200 million, um, to have something that could easily be managed and be, be maintained, but also still give us a lot of benefit. Um, kind of in that same vein, we want something that has a limited IT support because, you know, we still have a large IT department. And, of course, the biggest thing we want to do is get rid of spreadsheets and to do, you know, make it a lot more productive and put it um, into a system. Um, the full suite's great because that way, you know, you do one setup and you get all, you know, a lot of different benefits to it. The budgeting, the reporting, it's all fully aligned. And then on the reporting side, we also want to be able to switch between GAP and non-GAP. So that way our accounts could use GAP version. I use more of non-GAP measures or use both, and we can easily transfer between both of them. Um, and obviously, we want to have a low capital investment in data security is important. That's pretty straightforward. I'm going to skip over our timeline here. I mean, basically, it was a pretty fast process for us, a pretty fast implementation. 
Um, so why, why we picked host uh, is, you know, it's simple to use and manage. I think that's one of our overarching reasons because, you know, technology is great, but if you can't use it or if one person leaves and no one can work anymore, you know, you're, it's not really helpful. So we can easily make minor, major minor changes, you know, by ourselves. Um, if we need help, we can get that as well. Um, I really believe this will be a sustainable thing for the year over the years, so we can continue using it for, you know, hopefully five years or more. Um, and the SAS model eases the burden on the IT department. All I really need from my IT department is to fill out their budgets. You know, they don't really get pinged on anything else. Um, as far as it greatly improving, while we, um, you know, our budgeting process is the budget owners liked it. You know, it was easy to train them. You know, very minimal training to get people to use it, and people like that they have ability to see their HR data, do their capex planning, just have all that much more control for the you know the easy data entry. Um, from the finance side, it's easy to manage. We have top level assumptions. We can change you know global changes. Um, you know, we can take it's easy to review all the input from the budget owners, and we can easily compare between budgets and forecasts. So it really makes we spend our time on analysis, not data gathering. Um, and then you know the financial consolidations uh, applications was very was important for us, and it's very straightforward how that, how that works. Um, other reasons, you know, real quickly on host, the customer support is great. It's stateside, and so it's easy to get a hold of somebody and talk to a real person and get your problems fixed. They can log in, see your actual application, and, and, and start fixing things right away. Um, you know, it's a good good. The user community is great as far as being able to reach out to other people who have work on the same kind of problem. Um, yeah, I'm gonna skip on the next one here. So, what have we seen so far? Well, we have a much faster turnaround of the forecast. As far as getting the initial results, it's way better, and we actually can then drill into the detail and see what's really, you know, what's driving changes. Um, I think we can, you know, continue to improve our forecast quality as well, and we have the ability to do that. Um, and we have way less manual effort now. We still have our broken uh, ERP system, so there is. Usually a monthly effort where you got to do a little handhold of the data, but it's a one-time thing you do, and one person does it, and everyone gets the benefit of it. So, you know, whereas if you do spreadsheets, it just does not work out that way. On the reporting side, users get their own data. Um, people are, you know, happy that they can easily see what's changed in their data, um, and we have way more focus on analysis versus data collection. You know, and, you know that's by far we have, you know, before we could even come close to what we're doing now. And of course, there's a lot higher data quality. One feature that we're using um, that David mentioned uh, was his executive report manager, and this has really been, you know, a great way to leverage all the work we did to set this up, all the work we do on the forecast to really take it to the next level. And so, what we how we used it is we have two big packages. One is like a monthly financial summary um, that we we basically run at the end of the close, um, and it's like a 30-page report with detailed revenue margins, the operating expense, you know, R&D, sales, marketing, however you, you want to structure it. Um, with commentary that my team can put in there. And it's basically, you know, from my team's perspective, they spend their time doing the analysis and making the commentary, and you do a well, one-button push, and it basically generates this whole report. You know, it's been a you know, great win for us to be able to get more information pushed out to uh, um, management within the company. Um, another one we do is more of a detailed product line review as well. So similar thing where you can, you know, have some charts and tables and you know, you know and the commentary as well. It's a great way for us just to push data out into um, and analysis as well into an easy way. And you don't have to worry about things tying and whatnot. As long as the reports are set up correctly, everything it all it's all the same data. Uh, my last slide here is just a little bit on unplanned wins, and so I think this is important because when you start to scope out a new technology investment, there's it's, you know there's things you know about, there's a lot of things you don't know about, and um, and so what I found is host is able to meet the things I didn't even expect. You know, so one example was before we'd always done a two-quarter forecast, and then you know I was kind of given the mandate to do a six-quarter rolling forecast. So our old method of doing this in spreadsheets would just be very difficult. You know, just you know greatly magnify the work you had to do. And host, well, we were you know it was actually pretty straightforward. You know, we had to do a few little minor changes, um, and we were pretty quickly able we were able to pre-populate. Uh, the budgets into that new time frame, and the budget orange just went in and just you know added some more numbers. The next when we do our monthly forecast, um, you know, so it's very straightforward to do that, and you know, um, we're we've not been that way. Um, we also had to start reporting revenue at more of a regional level by product, um, which you know, if you do on spreadsheets, the more dimensions you have, it just get um, of how you want to look at the forecast. If you get to 
makes it much more difficult because it just you know you end up doing three dimensional arrays. So, but um, using host, it wasn't that big of a deal. We kind of modified some of our input templates so we could capture the revenue at the regional level. We could show the history at the regional level, and you know, modified to a few reports, and now we can do that easily. You know, we keep track of that as well. So it's just that's been a big win for us as well. You know, this is a kind of next one's kind of a you know, simple example where we used to have spreadsheets that would help to figure out for this uh, factory we have in Finland as far as what their build plan is, and they would drive some absorption forecast. Um, so in order, rather than have a bunch of spreadsheets out there that would be calculating this stuff, we actually built those spreadsheets right into host, and those users go in and they just actually, you know, enter in the build plan directly. And so it's just an example that, you know, pretty much anything you, can, you want to do in a spreadsheet, you can almost do in the system anyway, because it almost, it's almost like a spreadsheet setup. And that's been, uh, you know, a great way for us to just get speed along the process. Um, you know, last, you know, last next one is, you know, we had to change all our product categories. Well, it's pain in the spreadsheets to try to change and restate all your history and stuff. It's very quick in host to change your your hierarchies or how you view the data. You can quickly swap things around and automatically restate your forecast, restate your history. You know, piece of cake. Um, the last one there is uh, on headcount. Never had to do this before, but then we just got to, you know, we were doing a um, bunch of strategic hires, and you know, we want to track where the headcount was going. Um, we didn't initially design our system to handle that, but it's actually a little bit of changes, and now I can report, you know, headcount history, headcount going forward by function, by department. You know, it's kind of become our source of record. You know, where HR now comes to me to figure out what our headcount plans are, and and you know, so it's but that another another good win that we didn't plan on. So I think that's that's it. I mean, I think overall we've found that you know this technology has helped us to be much more effective and you know much more focused on analysis and um, business partnership and less on bean counting and data gathering. So that's that's it for me. And so back to you, John. Thank yeah. you. That's uh, that's great. I appreciate that, Dave, um, and that insight into uh, a fairly large size company. Um, uh, using technology to make uh, life a lot easier, both uh, for yourself and your internal clients. Um, at this point, we're going to go ahead and uh, pop out the first uh, CPE question. Um, if you're here for CPE credits, as well as uh, learning what's going on uh, with tech and finance and accounting, then uh, please answer this CPE question. Even if you're not, uh, we'd love to hear from you and, and uh, just see uh, what folks are, are doing. Uh, you see this question is about, does your company run significant uh, finance, accounting, treasury, or related apps in the cloud? Would love to know. Um, and uh, while we're uh, giving folks about one minute to answer this question, I'd like to remind everyone to ask questions at any time via the questions section in your GoToWebinar control panel. And uh, we'll do our darnest to get to that when we get to the Q&A section of today's event. All right, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and close down that poll, and we'll uh, go ahead and uh, keep moving on with uh, the next speaker today. This is our third speaker, and, and after this speaker, we'll move into the Q&A period. So it's my honor to introduce uh, Joe Ritchie, who's the director of the consulting group at Baker, Tilly, Virchow, and Kraus, LLP. Joe has been with the firm since 2009. His career spans three decades. He started in private industry with three publicly traded companies in uh, both finance and operational positions. Uh, the remaining half of his career has been consumed working with global management consulting firms, where he managed teams to solve enterprise operational challenges through process and technology-oriented solutions. Joe, please take it away. Thank you, John. Um, good morning and good afternoon uh, to everyone. So let me begin. Um, I'd like to focus us about relevance and regaining that back in the cloud enable world as a, a finance person myself. So there are five uh, topics to cover off. I uh, want to um, talk about the core and enabling technologies about convergence in the cloud. We see four forces in the new business world. With that comes a new operational model to compete in this marketplace. With that new operational model comes some new business capability needs. And then I'd like to close with some key messages. So convergence in the cloud. As we look at the core and enabling 
elements here very quickly. We have in-memory solutions. We have the feature of geospatial data. We're all familiar with social media. I think many of us will have a smart device and be mobile. Some of us will be honoring the advantage of analytics in the cloud and in order to process some big data. So I, I want to quickly read some research facts and metrics just to set the stage today in, in case many aren't following what's going on in the marketplace. So in 2009, the on-premise software market has shrunk by $7 billion, while software as a service grew to $13.1 billion. Now, they expect the software as a service market to grow to $45 billion by year 2014. That's a compounded annual growth rate of 25%. Now, some other interesting facts. 80% of new commercial enterprise apps will be deployed on cloud platforms. The mobile market, just isolating that marketplace, that's going to reach $1.2 billion in 2011. And there's forecast for it to grow to $3.7 billion. Again, that's a, a great compounded annual growth of almost 26%. Um, if I look at medical devices, that marketplace grew the fastest. It was 56 and a half million in 2010, and that looks to grow in the next eight years, approximately 27 percent. And then lastly, when we look at Cisco. They're predicting the cloud traffic is going to increase 12 fold over the next five years. Well, you know, that's pretty eye-opening, and I think that cloud computing solutions will become mainstream, whether your organization is expecting them or not. There's a new acronym out there. It's called BYOD, Bring Your Own Device to Work. And that's what much of the workforce is doing, bringing their technologies, introducing the mobile cloud-based applications to their company using their smartphones or their tablets. Another interesting point here is some business unit executives, they're going around my colleagues in finance, and they're buying cloud application software with their procurement cards and even bypassing IT. So when you, when you look at it, the new behaviors enabled by tech, they're altering the world before our eyes. So smart organizations today, they're using the cloud, mobile, social, and other enabling technologies. Why? They want to create first mover innovation advantage. That's going to propel them to be far more competitive. And by doing that, they're seeking the power of these core and enabling uh, technologies uh, with new data sources, how they're going to collaborate with other partners, um, the computational services that are available. So we're re reimagining the potential for how work will be done. And to close with a quote from Eric Schmidt, um, every two days we create as much information as we did up to 2003. Imagine that. So let me introduce the four major forces in the new business world. So it's, it's rapid new technology and the introduction of that with dynamic macroeconomic forces inside your industry or cross-industry innovation, and then always the people and workforce changes. Now, you know, businesses are getting better with recognizing and accommodating change for the last decade or so. But there is a special kind of change phenomena which is the most troubling for all companies. Now that type of change is best defined when multiple forces are changing simultaneously and quickly. If you look at these four forces individually, they're, they're very quite manageable. But when they converge collectively and converge often, we believe it presents great opportunities. 
we call it the phenomena. Now, this is where your organization has the opportunity to introduce innovation and to rethink how you're going to execute inside your company, inside a rapid deployment of all these core enabling technologies. So there are many data points to watch. Um, and I leave you with this question here. Is your organization proactively dealing with each of these four forces, or do you see the collective and simultaneous impact of all of them at one time? So the impact from the cloud on business processes, I'm going to take us through a very quick auto loan quote. And let me advance here. Yesterday, in time, let's say you're an applicant, and some of us would go to, you know, maybe your favorite credit union. You're going to go to the branch. You're going to meet with the loan officer. You're going to fill out some forms. You provide some evidence, you know, you, you know, about your income and employment. It probably takes several days, and if everything goes well, you get approved. Now, we as, you know, finance, we we like to see process flows, right? We want to understand the internal controls. We want to make sure we, we're gating the information and we're protecting it. Now, the credit union, days gone by, the loan officer meets with you, the applicant. He gets your, to fill out the forms. He verifies. He gets your credit score. He runs some information through credit model, right? And he, you know, to determine whether he's going to approve your loan application. Now, that seems pretty time consuming to me. And time is really precious. Um, and I think, and what we see, is the impact on this process in the tomorrow uh, world, which is for some today and others not, is our applicant is on Facebook. He's going to his friends and family list and, and asking for advice. Or he might, he might tweet, and then he gets back information, and then he knows, hey, you know, there's this social site out there called Yelp. So he goes on to Yelp, he reads some reviews about the credit union, where he might go, and look for his loan. He then might go to, you know, uh, bankrate.com or mint.com, fill out the forms online, scans his an income, because most likely he has access to a lot of information from a digital image. He gets several quotes. He likes the one he, he wants. He gets the forms from VeriSign, and off he signs, and it's done. I think that process is, is, is underway. If you're in that industry, and if you look at your competitors, what are you doing similarly? Now, for some organizations, as I mentioned earlier, that you might be already doing this. Okay, um, more and more people interact today via Facebook or Twitter or through a smart device, through their phone, their tablet, and they're on the go. They're mobile. They can be on a train. They can be walking the street. They can be in their coffee shop, and they're completing this process, this auto loan process, through, through a new way of doing business. They have rethought how work should be done and how business gets done. What I would offer to my finance colleagues here is I think you would want to understand how this impacts your business, this process of using core and enabling technologies, using the social media sites, using other external data sites. Ask yourselves, are you prepared to support this workflow? What about the investments you need to support the business in a dynamic enterprise? as the one we live in. Now, are you benefiting from the wealth of information from this enterprise that we're operating in and the financial forecast information that can be available to you? Now, when you think about the last uh, force, think about the workforce. How is this going to change your scheduling of your labor? Would it not impact your, your labor cost strategy? We think so, when you factor in those four forces. So along with that, 
you know, converging in the cloud. Um, let me just quickly go through this this uh, graph. So on the horizontal, we're talking about delivery model uh, that we're used to on premise, or you're being hosted, or you are uh, a single tenant within a software as a service solution, or you're operating as a multi-tenant software as a service solution. And on the vertical axis, here are some variable costs to operate. So you have your implementation, you have your ongoing operations, your system, your software, your hardware. It's quite evident, just looking at the graph, when you look at the size of the dollar signs with each of the delivery technology delivery models, that the multi-tenant software as a service solution is by far a cost-effective solution. Okay. Um, think about going back to the four forces. So for technology, we're talking about social, mobile, analytics. You know, the macro event here, if you think about the auto loan quote, could be the lending of money. Um, we at Baker Tilly think the real value of cloud computing is not just lowering the technology costs. Though it's high on the list, I'll, I'll give you that. We think it is building new business models and new innovation capabilities with new talent. That talent should help propel finance into a strategic role. Now, so my finance colleagues, even my IT colleagues, you come to me and say, Joe, is the cloud secure? And I said, well, if you look at the adoption rates, if you, you know, do your research, um, I think the question you might want to ask is, will we be followers or leaders in developing cloud security enhancements? How can you shape the cloud to meet your own security needs? The people on this phone are probably most familiar with Sarbanes-Oxley with you know the SSAE 16 you know the, the former SAS 70 rules and regulations the ISAs and so you have this wealth of knowledge that you could now help your business uh, embrace the cloud and you can raise yourself as the finance team to a strategic role so the new business capability needs are as follows so we're in a rapid deployment of core and enabling technologies. And with that, we have the opportunity, the phenomenon, to identify, to assess, and introduce innovation. Innovation so that we can rethink work and our processes and how business gets done. The speed of which this cycle occurs it can be very, very fast. And as a finance team, you know, we're suggesting that you be more in front of that process and embracing it and understanding it to then help the business unit accomplish a dynamic enterprise. So the creation of a dynamic enterprise becomes that business imperative. Restated, businesses must become as flexible and capable of morphing as the business climate they operate within. Those entities, we believe, that wait for change to come to them will quickly lose their competitive relevance. It's just not having the awareness and increasing the awareness. It's not enough. What we're advocating is business have to assess this impact of change on their firm. Your role as a finance leader is to find the ways to introduce the change in the best possible fashion. So let me draw your attention to the lower left-hand corner here on the rise of the dynamic enterprise. We all know of the world of our ERP system. I'm drawing your attention to that blue circle to the left. It's all our internal data. 
We have our CRM data. We have our human resource information system data. And we would live right inside of that. Well, around that blue circle in the external marketplace exists a wealth of information from different enabling technologies. If you remember earlier on the audit loan quote, I talked about Facebook, I talked about Twitter. Imagine if you're out and you're, you know, you're, you're working with your finance person and they're looking about how to grow the top line. You know, many people are enamored with following celebrities. And so one person mentioned to me, you know, we follow Kim Kardashian. So when she tweets, we, we try to follow where she's going and understand the impact to our business in that geography. Um, imagine that, using, you know, Twitter, an external data source to receive that information. Let's talk about YouTube, okay, and the explosion with that. Let me ask, how many videos reside at YouTube about your company or they were originated by your company? Where do your customers find information about your products? How well does your customer service and marketing team use this information to help resolve client issues? There's been an idea kicking around here about video, video streaming, and the popularity that it's growing in, in solving business processes and rethinking how to work. You know, some, some people said this was a very radical idea, and they said, how about we use video in physical inventory counts? And some would say, no way. The video, you know, it can be distorted. It can be changed. And we said to that colleague, well, we're asking you to be the catalyst. Think about this. If insurance companies use video to help insure physical assets, does it have a place for physical inventory? So not, not to go into all the details, it was that moment talking with that controller to say, you know, don't shut down. Think about the innovation that might come by working with your business unit. Um, there is a client of ours who uses cloud computing to process vast amounts of weather forecast data in which they dy dynamically alter their retail store staffing, mix every few hours. So they download all this information from weather.com and other sources, and then they crunch the data, they analyze it, they feed it into their human resource information system, into their time and labor management solution, and then alter the schedules. Now, for a retailer, you know, labor cost is like number one. So they're seeing market improvements by using external data sources in order to pull down information into their financial forecast, into their scheduling. Um, so to close out with this slide, in the dynamic enterprise, okay, you need to deploy some technologies. By doing that, the expectation should be the introduction of innovation. And with that, rethinking work. We firmly believe innovation should provide you a first mover advantage. It should provide you that competitive step. So where's your organization today? At the turn of the century, when we go back and you look at, you know, when software as a service started, okay, around 2000, and then, you know, moving into computing capacity to Amazon and others, to Google, then it started to expand more with developing platform as a service products. Then we saw, that, you know, office autom automation moving to the cloud. CRM, HR soon followed. Now you, there are, are complex applications being built in the cloud. Think about the external development community um, with cloud solutions. It's no longer just within your four walls with your IT group or with maybe a consulting firm that you're using or another outsourcing firm. 
the development community is huge. Think of the app stores. Think of the, your software vendor and how others are developing these apps to improve how you, how you do business. Let me close with the following messages. So think about your role in finance. What are those new frontiers that you need to better understand? Work with your business unit. Think about the volume and velocity of change in technology, those four forces that I talked about earlier, because they're going to impact your world. The dynamic enterprise, to close with, organizations need to be adopting this model to survive. It, it's not awareness anymore. It's in, enriching yourself with the information that exists out in the marketplace. So don't permit finance to be viewed as the last person or group that your business unit leaders want to see when it comes to marketplace innovation. I think finance nowadays doesn't have a choice. You have to be the leader. You have to be the enabler to educate, to embrace. We're smart people. We can find those ways to say yes and still satisfy all those control environments and then keeping pace with challenge. Technology is changing faster and faster. So there's a wealth of information out there to keep pace with. And if you don't, I think you risk elevating yourself into a strategic role within your company. And with that, we, uh, Baker Tilly uh, appreciates the opportunity to address the audience about uh, relevance regained in the, in the cloud-enabled world. John, back to you. Joe, thank you so much. That was great. Um, you know, I think uh, when businesses are following Kim Kardashian's tweets, isn't that a sure sign that the apocalypse is upon us? <laughs> All right, let's mm -hmm. go ahead and, and uh, move quickly here through our second poll question. So I'm going, I'm, uh, going ahead and, and launching this next poll. We'll, we'll give uh, about 45 seconds here. Uh, for folks to take a look at this. Uh, once again, even if you're not here for CPE credit, we'd uh, appreciate you just taking a moment and perusing that and answering. Um, if you are here for CPE credit, definitely please take uh, the poll. Uh, we have a number of questions queued up. If you have uh, any questions at this point, um, please feel free to add them. And, and we're going to move smartly here uh, to see if we can uh, get uh, as many of these answered as possible. Let's just go ahead and give uh, another five seconds here for folks to give their answers, and I'm going to go ahead and close it down. Okay. So at this point, let's go ahead and hop into our Q&A uh, portion, and um, let's start with uh, an interesting question here is, uh, and actually, Joe, I'd like to ask uh, this of you first, but I'm going to go around to all three of the presenters. Is real-time reporting the answer, or should a company seek to simplify its structures? Uh, for instance, fewer systems, fewer suppliers, et cetera, in order to kind of manage their, uh, the data to information problem. Yeah, um, real-time. Um, you know, understanding the definition to that term, but, you know, l l let me answer it this way. I think, you know, using core enabling technologies, right, to retrieve that information so that it's actionable, right, so that you can measure results quickly, then I would say, you know, there's a great advantage for real-time, you know, reporting. If you looked at the audit loan quote, that was very real time. With probably within an hour or so, they had a decision. So it was actionable. There was measurement, and there was a decision. In terms of simplifying the systems, I, I think simplification, generally speaking, as as a, a CPA and one who lived in the private world for many years, is paramount. Uh, I think coming to a you know a a simpler technology solution um, matters matters most. Great, thank you. Uh, Dave Watchsmith, um, looks like you guys uh, use technology to move towards real time, but uh, I love your, your input here. Is it real time reporting, uh, simplification of structures, or perhaps even both? 
I mean, I think it's always both because, I mean, there's only so much you can try to simplify your business. Sure, try to reduce the amount of vendors and all that, but, you know, there's, there's always something new to do. And so um, I think we're always trying to do both, you know, and try to simplify um, the – I mean, that's in part why we, we went post because it was simpler to do, to use that. Um, but we're not quite there either, you know, real time. So some things we are, but a lot of things we aren't. Gotcha. And uh, David Hunt, um, any uh, further comments on this? Yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll just agree with what, what was already said to, to, to the extent in terms of real time. Yeah, it's, it's great to have um, information and data real time. And you know, the extent that you can leverage technology to do that, you should be looking at that and driving that as a finance person um, internally within the organization. Um, I also agree with the statement that um, in terms of simplifying you know, structures within the, the accounting, like, for example, you know, you know, there's a lot of organizations that have been around for a long time or there's been, you know, changes within the organizations, but things like, you know, account structures and organization structures haven't been updated to uh, reflect that. So it's, uh, it's paramount that, you know, that we, that we do go back through those uh, structures and, and, and to reduce the amount of, uh, I guess, extra work that, that we have to go through because, you know, we have stuff in there that's not being used or, you know, there's an easier way to do it now. So I think, you know, as a, as a finance person, that's part of our role is to, you know, kind of, have, you, know, to, you know, lead that charge and effort um, and to make sure that, uh, that that point of view is taken. And, you know, the other one around, you know, vendor simplification, yeah, I mean, to the extent that you can, um, you got to do what makes sense for the business as well. Gotcha. Thank you. Um, back to Joe, uh, how can uh, you may you did a great job of talking about external data and how that's uh, impacting companies across the spectrum in a very real way, even if they don't realize it yet. Uh, how can finance organizations integrate external data in some meaningful way into existing systems? Wow, yeah, yeah, so we're going back to that blue circle about ERP and everything that's outside in the external marketplace. So there's a, there's a couple of things to consider, right? Um, first, you're going to decide on why you're going to go to that site, okay? But then how am I going to integrate that? Well, if you are truly a SaaS company, there are integration tools that exist that make it pretty, pretty simple. If I'm a CPA and, and can use an integration tool like Boomi, um, I think anybody can. Um, and Boomi is just not the only integration tool. I mean, there are others. But then, you know, when you look at some of the other data sources, there's structured and then there's unstructured data. And I think we all do a pretty good job understanding the structured data sources. It's the unstructured part, going through, you know, uh, reviews, pulling out key words, and then, you know, using technology tools to then interpret that into meaningful information. Um, so, you know, there's a tool out there called Indeca um, that clients use to help with, you know, structured and unstructured data. And so um, I think those are two key points I would leave our group with. Great. Thank you. Um, actually, David Hunt, I'd like to uh, redirect that one to you as well. How are you guys and how are you seeing your clients um, utilize external data? <coughs> yeah, so... Uh, so, so we we actually have a tool called the Decision Hub that's actually a host analytics tool. So, and we use that um, extensively to pull in um, quite a bit of external data, including you know the, one of the examples that I gave, um, you know PPI index, things like KPIs for other companies. I mean, that's automatically uh, pulled in from Decision Hub um, into into our uh, CPM suite. So, when we're looking at you know competitors or you know a market segment, I mean, we we actually have this setup where we can automatically pull in that data. Um, and then, you know, go through, you know, several different scenarios in terms of, hey, you know, what if we did this or what if we did that, how would that, how would that impact our business? So that, that's definitely one of the tools that we use and, um, you know, to pull in external data from, from um, into, into our CPM suite. Gotcha. And then one final question before we uh, go into our close down mode here. Folks can give us another 60 seconds. Dave Walksmith, are you guys at Planer using external data? Um, structured or, or otherwise, um, uh, you know, in your decision-making process? We, we aren't yet. We're, we're still in the investigation stage and trying to figure out what's relevant for our business. Gotcha. Fair enough. 
Uh, okay, well, with this, we, we have run to the end of our time. Let me take care of a, a couple of quick pieces of housekeeping. The first is uh, a wonderful thanks to David, Dave, and Joe for uh, your time and attention today. Great insight into uh, well, what two companies are doing, and then uh, through Joe to what um, uh, Baker Tilly is seeing amongst its customer base and, and some of their forward thinking on these topics today. I uh, greatly appreciate your time and attention, gentlemen. Next up, uh, thanks very much to Baker Tilly and Host Analytics. Not only great uh, resources for information on these topics, uh, but also uh, allowing us to provide today's uh, events uh, at no cost to all of our users and attendees. And um, it's just a pleasure to be working with both of these firms. Um, when we close down this event, uh, all the attendees will be presented with a survey very quick. We would appreciate your taking that. If you have any uh, questions or wish to be connected directly with any of today's speakers or the companies that sponsored today, uh, we make it really easy just to click the mouse to uh, have us make those connections for you. We're happy to do that. Uh, and the folks from Baker Tilly and Hosting Analytics are here to help. So uh, they would be uh, happy for uh, uh, to continue the conversation. If you have any questions about CPE, uh, please contact Tanya Walsh. You can see her email at the bottom of uh, this slide, and she will get you taken care of. Uh, and we will have today's deck and a recording of today's webinar posted shortly. Uh, with that, I would like to say thanks to everyone for attending. We appreciate your time and attention. And we will let you get on with your very busy week. We hope to see you again at our uh, another event uh, or online at performative.com. Take care, all.